Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is your bro Benzo back with a simulation type of game. It is uh, free off of Steam right now. It's called Accident the Pilot. So it's kind of cool. I'm assuming the pilot basically means a trial run just to kind of see how it performs and whatnot. So it is a simulation game. It's a pretty cool uh, simulation. I like the graphics and whatnot. Uh, just a little bit about myself in case you do not know. I'm a licensed paramedic for the state of Texas. So I know we do things a lot different here in the United States, but I am kind of interested to see how they do things in uh, the European countries. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, you can see there's different options you can kind of select. I think it's through different controls, audio, video, and whatnot. So you can always change that. And then uh, we do have a message back over here. Uh, I'm not going to read the entire thing. You can just kind of read this. You could put on a VR headset and kind of go through different scenarios, which is kind of cool. And then uh, you play as a journalist, basically, uh, or... Uh, I guess maybe an insurance agent or something like that. I'm not really sure. Uh, you got to piece together certain parts of the puzzle and, you know, kind of put it in order as to, you know, how the ac accident actually occurred, which is kind of cool. And then uh, we can go to accidents. And then uh, we'll go to the simulation. This is just a virtual crash test lab, so it's kind of cool. We'll start with that first. Kind of gives you a feel for just the, uh, the virtual aspects of the game and then we'll actually do a real scenario here in just a moment but these things are always kind of fun i've always been a big simulation gameplay nerd so but i'm always fascinated how the 112 uh, emergency services work so this is kind of like us rolling up on the scene right here i love the graphics though it's pretty nice so then when we pick up our smartphone, we can access that. And then we dial 112. Thank you for the call. I'll guide you through the tutorial. For other instructions, look at the video screens. So that's kind of cool. Turn our hazard lights on. That reminds me of Charlie Brown's teacher. That's what it reminds me of. All right, so then we, uh, this is just the scenario, if you will. So we have a fire going on over there, so we want to grab a fire extinguisher. So it's kind of cool. You know, when a license medic, you went through basic fire training. And I'm not, but this is just real basic, and I should know this. And then it wants us to mark the accident with different traffic signals here okay and then uh, this is you know semi-important firefighters what they do is when they arrive on scene they uh, of course they would assess a lot of other things but they would actually detach the battery and whatnot but it is kind of a good idea to shut off the vehicle so it doesn't cause it an ex actual fire so we're gonna check on the victims now and we just gently Nudge them, see if they're responsive. And then listen for breathing. This person is breathing. And then we just evaluate the wounds, why not? Then we check on the second victim. And kind of the same thing. Listen for breathing. And this one has no breathing. Okay, so here's a cool function with this particular scenario is that you can always rewind the time and you can hold down the R until you get to about right and then let go of the R right there because they kind of want you to make a mistake a little bit so that way you can go and check on the victims again they just want to show you that you can rewind time so we'll just do this over again here real fast Check this. Okay, that victim's checked on. Yeah, one more time. And check for breathing on this one. Okay, now we can actually help the victims by getting first aid kit. Now this one here is breathing. So what you want to do is just render first aid to this one. And some PPE. And then gently tilt their head back because you don't want to, you know, have issues with neck injuries and whatnot. 
And then this right here, you want to kind of listen for the heartbeat here. So you're going to do a total of 30. Almost there. Okay, new high score. So that's kind of cool. Now, for the American Heart Association, it pretty much is just chest compressions. And then this right here is kind of weird. You have to go with your mouse and then go all the way up and then all the way back down. And then check breathing again. Yeah, this one did. In my channel, we call it, instead of DOA, we call it DRT. Dead right there. All right, so these are uh, where you get to put your kind of like, I guess, insurance mind to work, if you will. <laughs> so it's a little bit, a little bit odd to be honest. Uh, now these are marked as one, two, three, four, so it's pretty easy on this one. But in the scenarios with the game, it's marked a little differently. So they don't give you just one, two, three, four. So then you just put them in correct order. So this part, like I said, is easy. But in the game, you kind of have to fill. You get to, you have to kind of put things what makes sense to you. See what I'm saying? So this was just a dummy, and yeah, that dummy did. But like I was saying, American Heart Association, pretty much you just do chest compressions. That's all you do nowadays. Now, if you've got uh, like a non-breather type of mask, you can put that on somebody. Is if you have somebody, uh, you know, with you. Uh, they can give rescue breaths, you know, but typically you're not going to take the time to even do that pretty much. You're just going to do chest compressions, at least here with in the United States. But if you do have one of those, like say a non rear breather, you can give a couple breaths here and there, uh, especially if you're getting exhausted. And CPR is exhausting. I've done CPR many, many times. Motor vehicle accidents, in hospitals. And then just people that are just unconscious through, you know, back of an ambulance. The first play five minutes of CPR, uh, you can nail it, no problem. You'd be surprised what you can do because the adrenaline rush. Okay, now we're in Sweden. Kronoberg County, Sweden. And I did notice that we're driving on the right side of the roads, which is kind of kind of cool. I know in UK and other parts like that, they drive on the left, is that correct? I'm, I'm assuming. But yeah, we drive on the right side of the road. All right, so we just got here on scene of an actual, ex actual accident. But our hazards, now let's go ahead and call 112. So let's kind of get out and assess the situation here. Looks like we got a head-on collision with the semi. Ooh, we got a fire going on. And just like most vehicles in Sweden, I guess they have fire extinguishers. Uh, we, we do carry those, but it's kind of rare, actually. A lot of people just don't carry these anymore. They just, get, they just don't carry them at all. I'd be probably having it the actual fire as soon as you close the engine, but that's all right. And then, of course, everybody has a fire extinguisher in Sweden, I guess. So, it's kind of cool. Alright, so we need to turn off the ignitions in the vehicles. Her window's busted out so we can kind of reach through there, turn hers off. And I personally, like I said, I would do things a lot differently here. I'd be doing everything at one time, you know. Like, I know this is important, obviously, to shut off the engines and whatnot. But you can kind of assess as you're shutting off, I think, it would be more accurate. Right, let's shut your stuff off, bro. Sorry, I can't tend to you yet. I got other things to do for the game. <laughs> 
All right, so we need to mark the axe. This is the part that kind of bothers me with this game. Is I feel like I'm wasting so much time by doing all the safety caution stuff. And, I mean, we just came upon the wreck. Uh, we slowed down with no problem, right? But in the game, you have to put these things down first. So, yeah, you don't need to comment down below how you would do how you would not do that. But you kind of have to go with what the way the game progresses you. Um, his, I think hit the back of his door is locked, but they've got some signals here, some triangle. Now the United States, I think they come in groups of three, so it's kind of weird they just have one. All right, we got those up. We gotta maintain safety first. We're attending to victims, right? All right, so they want us to check all the victims first, um, which is another thing that's kind of weird. I had already been giving my location. Ma'am, you okay? Just gonna do a seat belt. Just gotta go in there. She's not breathing at all. She's got a little kid back here. Okay, we'll just gently shake him. Hey, buddy, you alright? Okay, let's listen for his breathing. Nope, he's not breathing either. Okay, but yeah, this is actually realistic right here because you got to assess all, all injuries first before you can do things. This is all triage work. Hey, buddy, can you hear me? Let's listen for a breath real fast. Yeah, he's breathing. Okay, that's good. Check his his left arm. And then looks like he's got a possible femoral injury there. And then this guy right here will get in real fast. I will check him real fast. Hey, buddy, can you hear me? Nope, you're unconscious. And then we'll check his breathing as well. Okay, he's not breathing. The little kid's not breathing. Uh, the only person that's breathing is. Uh, check his wound, too. The only person that's breathing is the truck driver, looks like. And I think he went through that window right there. All right, so the, now the dispatch needs to know our exact location, which I think I could have done like right when I got here, but that's okay. Turn our nav, GPS. Got that. All right, so now we can actually help the victims now. This guy, with the be really careful, yeah, he's, should be moving him. That's pretty accurate. Uh, I'm gonna go tend to the kid first. Since we just did, you know, he's not breathing, so grab that bad boy right there. And then we'll tend to him real fast. August, August, can you hear me? Got some PPE. All right, and then we'll grab an artificial ventilation mask. And then we just go up with the mouse, down with the mouse. Up with the mouse, down with the mouse. Technically the mouse. I would have been checking for it. Okay, and you can hear that he's got an actual uh, pulse, and now he's breathing, so now he's okay. So when you put him in the recovery position, hold the mouse down for all those things. Kind of interesting. That opens your way back up. A lot of times you can go unconscious at the point where you're not breathing. And I'm pretty sure she she was non-responsive, so and we cannot remove her, so she's probably gonna be DOA or DRT. Dead right there, probably. But you can't let emotions get in your way. No hook a seatbelt. Get him out of the car. All right. Then we'll render first aid here. Definitely put on some gloves. She's going to know all kinds of stuff people can have. That's why you see cops uh, putting on all these PPE stuff. Okay, here we go.
30 to 2 pretty much. up and down. Got lucky on him. Alright, so Ambulance is on the scene. Ambulance. Or Ambulance. That's how you say it. In Sweden. Alright, so now we get to try to piece together this puzzle. So we'll get some impact collision there. And broken windshield. Yeah, I think he's wearing a seatbelt, man. Also, I'd be suing this company because I don't see an airbag deployment either. Uh, yeah. You weren't wearing your seatbelt, man. That's what happens. And then, oil puddle, it's irrelevant. But you see some skid marks. You know, that's a pretty significant skid mark for the most part. It looks like, I don't know, I think it just started about right here. So they were, she was going a good, maybe 40 miles an hour with impact, probably falling a little bit too close. And blood, irrelevant, okay. Uh, these skid marks here are irre irrelevant. Uh, here we go. Some footprints. Is that a boar? So a boar causes collision. And then like I said in Sweden, they drive on the right side of the road like we do here in the United States. So it looks like I don't think anything else is down here. These are just puddles here, which is irrelevant because he's driving the right side of the road. So a boar came out. He tried to avoid, it looks like. And then came right this way. And he is traveling at a pretty good rate of speed, looks like. And then, uh, of course, the truck driver didn't have any time to stop. I uh, don't see any skid marks from the truck driver, though. That's interesting. So I guess the truck driver wasn't paying attention either. All right, so let's put this in order. We'll say bore. And then we're going to say collision. Uh... Wait, no. He swerved to miss the boar. Collision. And then uh, his seat belt and caused him to eject. And then that one there, I guess, hit him from behind. And there we go. Success. Jacob Harrelson, after careful examination of the hospital, Jacob Har Har Harrelson was diagnosed with a spinal injury. He underwent uh, emergency surgery, after which he had to complete several months of rehabilitation uh, to be able to walk again. Currently, Jacob works as a security guard at a local supermarket, monitoring the cameras. He needs to take painkillers. Engolf Holt. Holt was the guy in the red car. Uh, suffered significant blood loss due to deep laceration of the arm by a piece of glass. Fortunately, your CPR saved his life, and the paramedic stopped the bleeding. The wounds healed quickly, but the glass severed uh, several nerves. He lost the feeling in his left hand, I think. And then this one here, Suzanne Orlander, I think she was DOA, pretty much smashed in front of the window head and hit her head, which is kind of weird because the, I guess the the bag didn't help. They were back to point bag. I guess Orlander, after the impact, I guess Augustus, August Orlander went into shock and went into coma. He went into a coma. He also, he also suffered from several minor in, internal injuries. After five weeks, he gained, regained consciousness and went to live with his father and suffers traumatic stress disorder, post traumatic stress disorder. All right, so it's kind of cool. And then the good thing about this game is right now it's free on Steam. You get one scenario, and that's why it's called Autopilot. Or uh, I should say accident, the pilot. Yeah, that's that. That's it. Accident and then the pilot. So what you do is you uh, get to determine what happened during all these accidents and stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. You get to put them in different scenarios as to what you think is right. And then if you, met, you make a mistake, you can always rewind time, which is kind of cool. And then you also get to render some first aid. 
But anyway, that'll do it for our video for today. Thank you to the patrons and the members. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for the support. We could not do this channel without you. And thank you for visiting the merchandise and the Benzo Effect channel. The store is up and running. I greatly appreciate all the support lately in the channel. You guys are awesome. But go ahead and get this game, guys. It's free. I think it's only like six gigabytes, so you can always install it and play a little bit and see if you like it. And then I think the game is going to be coming out really soon. But guys, thank you so much for in, in hitting the like button. I really appreciate that. If you'd like to see more simulation games like this, uh, be sure to let me know down in the comments. I really do appreciate people that also subscribe to the channel. You guys are awesome. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Don't seek. Y'all are sick.